Hey guys, what's going on? Here I am again. I gotta, I gotta say, it's a pretty, pretty day. I'm just gonna hang it out inside, but I may go outside here in a little bit. I wanted to, I wanted to just say, hey, I hope everybody's doing good um, and uh, staying safe. And, and uh, just wanted to share a little scripture with you, tell you that I'm still missing everybody. I'm really ready, I'm really anxious for us to be able to get back together. Um, and I hope you're doing well. And, and I just wanted to share a little scripture, just something to think about. Um, it's, 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 it's a little bit, that's not too, that's not very long, just a little bit long. Let me read this. It's from Matthew chapter 14. And it's just an encouragement. I think it's, I think it's appropriate um, for today. Matthew chapter 14, it starts at verse 22. Um, it says, Immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Now when the evening had come, he was alone there, but the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled and saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out with fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I. Do not be afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. So he said, Come. And when Peter had come out of the boat and walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid and was beginning to sink. And he cried out, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, O you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when he got into the boat, the wind ceased. Then those who were in the boat came and worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. So we've read this before, we've talked about it before, but I think there's some important lessons for me to learn today from what's going on around us today, because obviously Jesus, this is an opportunity for several, several important things. Um, Jesus tells his disciples to get in the boat and to go. Um, and he sends them on a journey, and Jesus knows, Jesus, Jesus knows what they're about to encounter, so he's not sending them into something that, that is beyond his understanding, he just tells them go get in the boat and go. And so as they're traveling across the water, the, a storm comes up. Jesus goes to pray. The disciples are out there by themselves. It seems like they're rowing and they're doing, and, and it says the sea, that the, 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 the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Now, Jesus had told them to get in the boat, and he wanted them to go to the other side. As you're going along, um, the, the boat's being tossed and the waves are kind of crashing and whatnot, and then they see something. Think about this for a minute. See, when we read some of this stuff, sometimes it's it's easy to read it and and and, and kind of not try to not not really see the full picture. It's hard for me to really imagine what the disciples were thinking. But they're they're in this boat and and the the, the, the waves are rolling and the, and the storms are beating and the winds blowing and then they look and they see what they think. They said, "Must be a ghost." They see somebody walking on the water. Um, and immediately, see, that's one of the words that's important in this. And several times in here, Jesus, uh, it, it, as it's talking about what Jesus did, it says immediately, several, couple times. It says immediately Jesus spoke to them. They're traveling in the boat. They're all afraid. And immediately Jesus says, it's me. Don't be afraid. It's okay. I got it all under control. Um, and he says, no, it, it, it's okay. Don't be afraid. Um, I, that, now, the, the, the disciples are all in the boat. And Peter speaks up. And Peter says, if, Lord, if it's you, well, let, let me come out and walk on the water. Let me, let me come to you. Now, I don't know about you, but I can tell you myself, if I were in a boat and it's tossed around, um, probably the last thing I'm going to think about is getting out and walking on the water. But Peter is watching and he sees Jesus and he says, if it's you, let me come to you. Now, it's really easy to pick on Peter for you know speaking, but the rest of the disciples didn't speak up. Peter had Peter had faith. He even offered. He said, "Look at um, maybe I could do that. If it's you, let me do that." And Jesus says, "Okay." He says, "Come." One word, "Come." Uh, and Peter got out of the boat and he walked on the water to go to Jesus. See, there's something really important in this because one of the things that I need to just be reminded over and over um, is that Jesus is God. Is that Jesus is, and, and, and as God, 
Jesus can suspend the laws of science. He can suspend the laws of physics. He's walking on the water. And even Peter, flesh and blood, big old fisherman, normally Peter gets out of the boat, Peter's going to sink. He's not even going to, one, one foot in the water and he's, and he's going down. But Jesus says, come on. And Peter, it says, Peter walked on the water. Now, I don't know how far out Jesus is, but let's say he's 20 feet out. He may be further, I don't know. He says, close enough that they could recognize him. And so he says, come. And so Peter gets out of the boat and he starts walking on the water. And he says, and so as, as, as Peter gets out of the boat and he starts making his way to, toward, toward Jesus. And then something happens. Um, it doesn't say that Peter took his eyes off of Jesus, but it does say that something else caught his attention, and it was the storm. It was the waves. It was the wind. It was boisterous. Big word. But it was boisterous. And he says, uh, and, and, and so Peter's walking, and, and all of a sudden his gaze goes, I don't know if he looked away from Jesus, but it became evident that all of this, that the storm around him, and when his focus went off of Jesus, Peter began to sink. And and uh, and so as he starts sinking in the water, he says, Lord, save me. There's a, now check it out. There's another use of that word immediately. He says, immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him. Um, and, and so Jesus, if he's 20 feet out, I don't know how he got to him so quick, because he's Jesus. He was able to immediately grab him before Peter went under. That's pretty quick. And so he grabs his hand and he lifts Peter up and is, and, and Jesus helped him into the boat. It says, when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. Now, Jesus says something to him. He says, your little faith. He said, why did you doubt? Now, for, for years, it's, it, it's, I've, I've thought about, I've heard a lot of sermons and lessons, and even, even kind of thought this myself, that Jesus probably chided Peter, that Jesus probably said, you know, what were you thinking? Little faith. But, I, you know, I don't think that that's the way Jesus treated Peter. Peter displayed faith just by recognizing him and recognizing that he's walking on the water. I mean, he's right in front of him, but still he recognized him. Peter displayed faith by saying, if it's you, let me step out of the boat, just to say that to begin with. He displayed faith in Jesus. And so, and then even further faith to actually step out of the boat. That's where Peter took his faith and he put it to work. Because it had been easy enough to say, oh yeah, I'd walk on the water if you told me to. What? You, you actually want me to do it? Yeah. So Peter steps out into the waves, out into the water. And so Peter's displaying faith. Um, and he looks around. And yeah, then he begins to sink. So when Jesus lifts him back up and he helps him into the boat. You know that sometimes when we read something black and white, it's kind of like, kind of like a text message. You ever get a text message or read a text message or send a text message and you look at it, and sometimes it's really hard to read the full maybe emotion or the mindset of the person that sent it because sometimes text black and white, it's kind of hard to tell if somebody's excited or angry or mad or happy or what by simply reading words. This says, Jesus, that he did say, you have a little faith. Why did you doubt? Here's the thought. Okay? Now, I don't know about you, but I spend sometimes too much time watching videos on Fail Army or AFV or something, watching people crashing their bicycles, crashing on, on water skis, uh, whatever, you know, and hoverboards. Wow, hoverboards, really? So on hoverboards, people falling off of things, and what happens? If somebody is at the lake and they fall in the water, because they've swung out on a rope and they fall in the water or they fall on the scale. What happens? Every time on one of these things, people laugh. I don't know why, but I'm picturing Jesus. I may have shared this before. Did I? I don't remember. But anyway, um, I can almost picture Jesus kind of laughing. Think about the difference between Peter, between Jesus talking to Peter and going, man, why do you doubt? You know, and, and either verbally, not, not smacking him, but verbally smacking him and saying, well, why did you doubt? I don't think that's Jesus. Um, I could almost picture Jesus laughing at Peter. Going, you know, Peter's soaked. Now all of a sudden, you know, and they didn't have, you know, as easy to change of clothes as we do. Um, Peter's soaked and he's, he's doused with water. And I can almost picture Jesus kind of shaking his head and laughing at him going, Why, why'd you doubt me? Come on, Peter. And smiling, help him up into the boat. And he was able to talk to him. And he was, he was willing to, 
to he was able then for the disciples to listen to him and and he and, and he spoke he, he, he the winds just got calm when jesus commands the wind so um so when uh, peter got out of the boat this is the whole point of this when peter got out of the boat and peter is walking toward jesus He's able to actually walk on the water, even though those storms are all around him. When he stepped out into the boat, from that point that he recognized Jesus, that he acknowledged Jesus, to when he stepped out in the, into, the, into the water, and when he actually started walking on the water, the storm hadn't changed, it's still the same storm. But now as he's walking, literally walking on the water, he looks around and the storm is still the same, but he puts his focus on the storm on the wind, on the waves, um, instead of on Jesus. Um, and, and, and Jesus says, trust me. That's really what he said. That, that, that's not the words of Jesus, but, but he says, trust me. Why did you doubt? Why, why don't you have faith in me? That's, that's, that's using, the, the, he's saying, why didn't you trust me? Um, today, there's a lot of stuff that's going on around us. Not only the virus stuff, I don't know if you, don't know if you watched it, you watch the news there's protests and there's there's a lot of anger and there's a lot of confusion and there's a lot of worldly stuff going on all around and some of them are getting close to home but all around our nation and around the world but particularly in our, in our own nation there's a lot of stuff around um, I encourage you and me and me I'm in the same boat get that okay I'm in the same boat um, I encourage you and me to keep our faith Keep our eyes focused on Jesus. Because with all of the stuff that's going on, where there's the virus and the protests and all the different things that are going on around the country, um, what people need, starting with me and you, what we need is the hope that only that Jesus gives. We need to have faith and hope and trust in Jesus. Um, if I take my eyes off Jesus and eyes off of that eternal prize, then the world looks like a really, really scary place. And it is. But Jesus gives a perspective. Um, he wants us to trust him. And what the world needs is the hope that comes to Jesus. They need to see the church living and trusting in Jesus. Um, Jesus can, can the, the, the storm was still there. When Peter was walking on the water and the waves were still rolling, the storm was, there, was still there. But it, Jesus was able to see him through that storm. But when he looked at the storm overwhelmed him, when he took his eyes off of Jesus, so I encourage you, keep your relationship with Jesus, keep your relationship with God, and do that by praying, by pray every day. Make time, take time to, like we talked about last week with Jesus, praying and making, making time to spend with God in prayer. Even Jesus did that. Even Jesus went about time every time, in, every day, uh, in, in his daily routine and all of his busyness, Jesus would spend time in prayer. Um, we need to do that. Make sure that you spend time in prayer. Make sure that we spend time with this, that we understand the scriptures and put our faith and our trust in Jesus. And the people of all around the world and all of this craziness that's going on around us, um, people really need hope and they really need peace. And we know where peace comes from. It comes from Jesus. So let's, let's, let's show the world where hope comes from. Let's live for Jesus, okay? You guys have a good week. I just wanted to encourage you. Keep your faith in Christ. Keep your eyes focused on him. The storm's still going to roll. But with our eyes on him, Jesus can help us. Jesus will guide us through all the rough storms of life, the stuff that's going on, okay? Now, here's something for you to pray about. This is Sunday afternoon at whatever time it is. I'm not quite 6 o'clock, but it's getting closer. Um, um, uh, something to pray about. Pray for Emily. Emily had a uh, Emily. So I said Dilbeck, didn't I? Emily Doss. So we have to get used to that. Mrs. Doss. Uh, Emily had. Uh, she had. Uh, she's been having some medical tests and some things going on uh, with her with headaches and with her vision, um, and uh, had some really really scary diagnosis. They were thinking maybe she had a tumor and some different things, brain swelling, and it turns out that she has some fluid behind her eye. That's still a very serious thing, but praise the Lord that she doesn't have a, a tumor or something that they have to deal with. But this, this flu behind her eye is still very painful and it's a serious situation. Started her own medicine uh, and she had, a, she had a reaction to the medicine. So she needs our prayer, a lot of prayer. So pray for Emily. 
also pray for uh, uh, pray for Audrey. She's got uh, uh, Loretta and, and Bobby and Annalise, mom. Uh, they've got a really rough situation in their family. Lost a, uh, Audrey lost her sister this weekend. So pray for them. Lift them up and encourage the family. Um, and uh, also Sean and Christy, um, you can probably maybe hear them in the background. They stopped by just a little bit ago. And, and, and they, they, were, they were out and about in Siloam today. Um, and there's a family that lost her house in a house fire. We need to pray for them. And also, if we can figure out a way, we can reach out to them. Had some young, had some young ones. So anyway, uh, lots of things to pray about. Um, and keep your faith in Christ. Keep going on. And, and uh, you know, maybe now it's time. Oh, hey, look. Okay. A snack. There you go. You guys take care. Um, and uh, we'll meet again. See you later.